Hello. It's still simplified. How that work? My name is uh, Jon Skapteig. I am the tribe lead of the global platform tribe at uh, Signicat, uh, which is a high-growth uh, software as a service company. We cater for regulated industries, uh, which includes financial institutions, health insurance, and uh, government. I'm located in our headquarters in uh, Trondheim, Norway. So how does Istio simplify things for Signicat? Well, it allows us to have team autonomy to really double down on this platform engineering approach with an internal development platform. And it allows us to have security guardrails so that uh, individual teams can deploy with confidence. It allows automation of manual processes uh, for us to successfully scale. It has a consistent API for uh, traffic, both from the outside in, but also in between services. And it enables a unified looking glass into how the traffic is running inside of uh, the uh, different products. And the uniform security is also uh, key for us, especially when we're having audits. Because then uh, we can confidently say that this is secure, this is how it works, this is the one component that guarantees uh, some of the crucial security features. But what is Istio? Um, it is known by a few names. Service Mesh is the most common one. Uh, but it's also an API gateway. It also induces nightmares for those who operate it. And it has a number of names uh, internally. Pilot, Citadel, Galley. There's a lot of features. There's a lot of complexity. And uh, to the point where it's named the worst value to complexity ratio ever. And uh, it is fairly complex because it has a lot of features. But what does it actually do? Well, it configures reverse proxy, namely Envoy. And the reverse proxy, it's essentially a web server. Um, so you have your requests, they go to the web server, uh, which proxies them before they enter the actual uh, product or the service. And what Istio do is to configure this reverse proxy. Um, in software-defined networking, this is referred to as the data plane and the control plane. Where Envoy is where the data flows through, and Istio, the control plane, is the configuration component. So why do we have a tool which all it does is configure web servers, more or less? Well, Signicat needs horizontal scaling. In order to do that efficiently, we need automation. For a static setup um, that has you know, configuration files and conf file on the file system, there's uh, a number of other tools uh, which help with that, like Puppet and Chef. Um, in a dynamic fashion, you also have the basic ingress controller of uh, Kubernetes. But once you start looking at the complexities of all the bits and pieces that fits together with networking, where you have a number of different domains that have their own specific certificates and different security options, and then you want to add some gRPC into the mix, this is where one traction uh, becomes really useful. But if you have a very simple use case, you probably don't need the complexity that follows with a lot of features. So you're probably better off uh, with a simpler solution. But in Signicat, uh, we do need these features uh, because we have customers in regulated industries. And um, this wonderful picture that uh, came from uh, Edward Snowden, where uh, the internal network is all unencrypted, and yes, as soon as you are able to get in there, you can see all what's going on. This illusion of a secure network um, is no more. So we absolutely need to have security, encryption, also between services. We are also seeing a number of teams, we have an exponential increase in uh, capacity requirements. So we absolutely need 
a dynamic scaling. And we have, uh, through mergers and acquisitions, quite a fragmented tech stack. So we have Java, we have .NET, we have PHP. They all communicate through APIs uh, with a microservice approach. And on top of this, we have white labeling. So we have a number of customer domains pointing to our servers, that have their own uh, security requirements, their own certificates that all needs to seamlessly integrate into the platform. So how does Istio help us? It covers a lot of the functionality. I mean, SignaCat has been around for some time. It's not like these are new problems uh, per se. And we have had uh, other solutions in place, um, which is Apache and Squid and HA proxy and then mitigating this uh, internal network with huge ACLs to kind of determine what traffic can go where. And then uh, a number of uh, control plane components like a Puppet and Soul Stack. Um, but at the end of the day, you kind of had manual provisioning of new nodes, new capacity, new certificates, and then you roll out this static configuration update. It wasn't really as flexible as um, we wished it was. Uh, but Istio also provides things that we didn't really do much uh, from before, at least not uniformly. So you have these reliability properties uh, that you now have in the proxy instead of having the Java library to do this, the PHP library to do this, you have one uniform way to do this across the platform. The observability is also uniform, so you can see all the requests, regardless of whether it's uh, some uh, Tomcat or if it's Nginx or what have you that uh, kind of spits out the logs, you have the Envoy layer and then you can have um, topology maps across all of your uh, microservices. And of course, the security, we can enforce encryption, um, meaning we can guarantee that it's also encrypted. All of this now happens in a consistent API, which means we can integrate um, with our way of working. But ultimately, it's about scaling digital delivery. This is uh, the promise of platform engineering, that we can have a set of services, a uh, set of rules, that can be used by service teams. They are self-sufficient in configuring routes and network policies and um, the uh, different options for reaching the individual services. Um, and Istio is the boundary between platform owners, which operate and install Istio itself, and service owners, which create ultimately the um, and customer value. And with the uniform API, it means that we can have an integration point with our self-service platform to set up custom domains, to have customers upload certificates signed by a specific CA. And it uh, allows us to have centralized dashboards, which is uh, universally useful. One example of this is the red metrics. And you can see these red metrics from all the services. And you just get it out of the box. It's available in the platform. So ultimately, complexity, it's the cost of scale. Um, and Istio itself, uh, it doesn't do anything but abstractions. It doesn't remove the underlying complexity. I mean, the space which Istio operates in which is Kubernetes and web services, network and security, and even as part of um, the internal developer platform. They are complex systems. But modern software development is complex. So are we stuck operating this uh, Istio complexity forever? Hope not. So the Kubernetes project uh, has also recognized the need to provide vendor neutrality also on API gateways and adjacent technologies. And the gateway API um, is getting some traction, uh, starting to make progress. Um, there's still missing support for the service-to-service -service communications. But assuming this uh, 
uh, is successful and uh, gets part of the um, official Kubernetes project, that opens the options for vendors. So the um, world bearing turtles, um, that is the different cloud platforms, could offer this as a managed service, then it doesn't matter so much if it's Istio or if it's something else that actually implement this, uh, as long as the API is readily available, you just use it and you expect it to work. And you can offload the problems of operating it to vendors instead. So that is uh, what I had. Thank you for watching. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions.